This is what's interesting about you is that uh, unlike uh, I, I know Peter Davison and Tom Baker both uh, have sometimes played villains, but you get play, you get asked to play. You're almost best remembered for. Well, villains. I did villains before Peter I did Doctor Who. Yes. Um, uh, Paul Meredith and um, the Brothers was a series I did in the seventies, which probably most people in Britain would you know, of a certain age would know me Paul better than Doctor Who, and he was a kind of pre JR JR. And I was actually voted in 1975 or 6 the most hated man in Britain. Yeah. Um, quite an accolade, really. Um, and so I did a lot of stage villains and you know, the kind of smooth, evil. Do you, do you like Do you villains. prefer those? Oh, sorts they're, of they're usually, with the exception of Doctor Who, they're usually the more interesting roles. If you think of, mm. you know, think of Dallas, what do you rather play? JR or Bobby Ewing? Exactly. JR. Exactly. No contest. Exactly. Think of most things, you know, with. One or two exceptions, Doctor Who is one. Um, I suppose Sherlock Holmes is another. Sherlock Holmes is, well, he's on more Moriarty, so you know more about him. Yeah. But in most um, you know, major uh, dramas, the, um, the bad guys are more complex and better written character, usually. Mm. Is there a role like that that you haven't done yet that you've no, ever I, always had your eye on? No, it? I have no ambitions to play existing roles. I want to do new stuff, really. Mm. The, uh, um, let me bring it back to about Pat Rowden for just a moment again. What, when you were working with him on the two doctors, or or after that, because I know you stayed in touch with him, the uh, um, is there anything in particular that you that you remember well about him that or or? Well, I, I knew Pat for some time because I'd shared a flat with when I was a young actor with David, his son. We, uh -huh. we, we shared flats for about five or six years. He and I and a, a director friend of ours, and then we you know, eventually got girlfriends and got married, and we kind of you know, went our separate ways. But. There was a period when we were all fresh in our career that we were all together. So when David got married, I was his best man. And so you know, I met Pat at the wedding. Um, and I, he was an actor I'd always admired. It never occurred to me that one day I'd play Doctor Who. Um, and I was not nervous about working with Pat, but, but I was aware that I didn't want him to think that I thought I was usurping his place. And within five seconds of working with him, I perfectly clear that we were just two professional actors doing our job. There was no element of that with him. Mm. I think with um, both Tom and John it would have been trickier um, because in their different they, ways they were very jealous of their patch. Um, I managed to get through to John quite quickly when, when I did work with him and he, he said, you yeah, know, we must work together. And we, we did get on well <coughs> and I've never acted with Tom so I, I don't know about that. Um, but Patrick was, he, he would take you as you were. Uh, and we laughed a lot, is my memory. There were a couple of things I'd liked about Pat. One was, he wanted, he sort of wanted to be a vegetarian, he told me, but couldn't, he liked meat too much to be a vegetarian. So he decided that the honest approach was to only eat the meat of something that he could actually kill himself. He said, if I was starving on an island and it was full of animals, he said, I, I could pull fish out the sea and cook them and eat them to survive. I could wring a chicken's neck. I wouldn't like doing it, but I could do it. He said, but I could never look a pig in the eye, or a cow in the eye, or a sheep in the eye, and kill it. So he didn't eat beef, or pork, or mutton, or lamb, but he had fish and chicken. Because he said, I couldn't ask someone to kill something for me that I couldn't do myself. Very honest attitude. Very interesting yeah. approach. Yeah. And the other thing I said to him once was, you know, Pat, I've never, I can't remember seeing you in a play in the West End of London, you know, where a lot of actors, you know, at some point in their career are seen in the West End. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh no, he said, I don't do stage acting. All that shouting in the evening, which is a wonderful <laughs> definition of acting on the stage, shouting in the evening. Somebody should make a book title. <clears throat> he liked to, to, you know, to work from nine to five and go home to his he, families. I have to tell you that, um, like uh, Pat, I always seek out any uh, film or any uh, appearance that I can get my hands on that you've been in. And like Pat, I'm never disappointed, uh, in both of you. Uh, no matter what it is or what role he's playing or you're playing, I'm always pleasantly surprised. Oh, that's uh, nice which I think is, uh, we, I, I hope that that's what you know, you're always aiming for. Uh, the, uh, as you look back over your career, the uh, uh, Ultimately, now looking back at with the span of time and all, uh, uh, you, you're still. Uh, I assume that you're still very proud of your involvement in Doctor Who and. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you? In the sense, I'm proud of all. I'm not proud. <coughs> proud implies, you know, I'm proud of it. But uh, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm at ease with it. I'm completely at ease with all the work I've done. It had both at the time and later on, and then on to now, had you any idea that this would keep going and keep going? I was warned. <laughs> um, when, I, when I took the job, I was warned by both John Nathan Turner and David Reed, who was the head of Series and Serials, that uh, this was a commitment which was broader than the contractual equipment to work, a uh, commitment to work for the, uh, you know, for the allotted period of the contract. Um, I, I suppose if you said in 2003, do you think you'll be in uh, California at a convention of Doctor Who? I might have gone, mm, yeah, but here I am. Do you uh, uh, do you get a chance to? Uh catch up with people that you don't see much otherwise? Uh, not, not as much as you'd like, because at the moment you, your feet hit the, the tarmac of a plane. There is always, I mean, the fact I'm sitting here now, there's always someone waiting for you to do the next thing. Yeah. So the time to actually catch up with uh, other members of the cast is quite small. Colin, as always, thank you for your time. A very I great appreciate pleasure. it. And, very uh, great it's pleasure. always a pleasure.